Hello and welcome to another shamelessly exploitative episode of the wonderful universe of This Ain't No Game. I'm your host, Ryan Davis, and this week's feature is the relatively obscure 1983 screwball sex comedy, Joysticks. Now, Joysticks is, if nothing else, a mercilessly opportunistic product of a very specific moment in time, focusing most of its energies on two youth trends that were at their absolute apex in 1983. Raunchy, R-rated teen sex comedies, a huge wave of which had just been brought on by the surprise popularity of the movie Port and the sudden ubiquity of video game arcades. Sir, would you stop playing the games? And it actually starts pretty promisingly, all things considered, with an opening montage of classic arcade games like Defender and Miss Pac-Man, uh, all intercut with a young woman best described as bodacious, uh, yanking and tugging provocatively on a joystick while an endearingly cheesy sub Buckner and Garcia novelty rock song about those golden video arcades you kids seem to love so much plays in the background. It ain't high art, but at least there's some charm to it. But it all goes downhill from there. Uh, and in the hands of director Graydon Clark, a low-budget filmmaker whose most noteworthy credit is a movie so paint-peelingly bad that it was lampooned on Mystery Science Theater 3000, Joysticks is a really eye-poppingly amateurish production, defined by bizarre performances that are dimly caricatured and half-dimensional, shoddy production values, and a crude, seemingly half-finished script that is bafflingly formulaic while making virtually no sense on a scene-by-scene -scene basis. You want to play Pac-Man? Uh, maybe later, maybe later. This is an elemental slobs versus snobs story, focusing on a ragtag group of teen-like actors that run the local video arcade uh, and are being antagonized by an uptight local businessman played with the puffy, furrowed consternation by B-movie superstar Jodon Baker. If this race is a health business, I got photographic proof of violent Health violations. My man Mitchell sees this whole electric half-naked venture as a morally corrupting influence on his brash and sassy teenage daughter, uh, a character whose cheap valley girl by way of Dutch Pennsylvania accent. Just valleys, video arcade is the only place to go for good clean fun. It's so embarrassingly bad, it totally, like, oh my god, it makes me want to, like, dry fire a six-hour nine-millimeter, like, into my mouth. Why can't my daddy be like everybody else's and stay him in barbecue? Okay, that's maybe hyperbolic, but only by like the slimmest of margins. If I want to go to the arcade, like, I am going to go. Okay. The premise is so familiar that you'd think you'd know exactly how it's all gonna play out. In a lot of ways, it's all rather predictable uh, with both sides hatching their fair share of seemingly brain fever induced schemes to foil the other. Uh, and loads of improbable misunderstandings and reversals of fortune, uh, and, and with all of it leading up to a contrived Save the Community Center style video game competition featuring some comically oversized joystick props. Now, while our Valley Girl friend is the most murderously annoying character of the lot, the rest are disputably better at best. Uh, your primaries include the impossibly naive and prudish nerd Eugene, as well as McDorfus, a third-rate Bluto slash boner slob uh, that's basically a greasy shirt propelled by farts. Dorfus maneuver! <laughs> Though he's meant to serve as comic relief, he's honestly more effective as a chilling argument for the soul-damaging effects of video games. I wasn't even much of a start-off in life. Uh... As a child, <laughs> at least what I can remember of my childhood, I can't go on like this! <laughs> Other than cult favorite Jodon Baker, uh, the only really recognizable face in joysticks is John Grise, uh, who most will probably recognize as Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite. Sadly for Grise, uh, he arguably has the most embarrassing job as King Vidiot, a cartoonish punk with painted hair and a similarly weird entourage who serves as either a freaky sideshow or antagonist depending on the movie's needs from moment to moment. As obvious as the basic beats of the story and the broad character stereotypes might seem, what makes Joystick such a brain-scrambling experience is the way it gets from one scene to the next, uh, and the nonsensical characters that gamely try and move the whole thing forward. Now, 
It's not that I mind nonsense. I mean, really, nonsense is my bread and butter, both personally and professionally. But joysticks is mostly bad nonsense. Uh, it has all of the internal logic of a David Lynch fever dream after he gorged himself on like a salad bowl full of taco meat and absinthe. Uh, except that David Lynch movies are usually marginally more cogent and way, way funnier. <laughs> Not even the random bits of nudity, uh, which are really the only aspect that justified Joystick's R rating, can save it. Uh, though it doesn't help that many of those moments are saddled with creepy undertones of sexual assault. Smile! Hey! What, what are you... Don't! The whole thing is fitfully paced, uh, with some scenes lingering for an uncomfortable amount of time before just kind of randomly ending, uh, as though they didn't want to waste any of the film they had shot, which, to be fair, is potentially a real concern, considering how low rent the whole production looks. And increasingly, uh, when the movie can't figure out how to gracefully exit one scene and transition to the next, it'll just fall back on an exceptionally cheap-looking Pac-Man wipe. If there's anything positive to cull from the experience, it's the presence of so many classic arcade machines. It's not saying much, uh, but I found it oddly ingratiating that Satan's Hollow and Super Pac-Man, two relatively obscure titles by today's nostalgic standards, end up playing significant roles in the movie. Satan's Hollow! <laughs> Joysticks is the kind of movie that like, maybe if you caught it on late night HBO as an impressionable youth in the early 80s, might have made a positive impression simply on the high volume of nonsensical fart gags, cheap innuendo, random boobs, and of course, video games. Uh, seeing it today, though, Joysticks is only really remarkable for how grueling and unwatchable the whole thing is. And that's going to do it for this week's episode of The Wonderful Universe of This Ain't No Game. Be sure to come back next time to watch an arcade-hustling Emilio Estevez finally meet his match. A deadly match!